Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Uh, as you can see, I've got my canvas ready here. This is just a piece that I did a little while ago that I just, it just didn't turn out for me. I don't like it. So I'm going to pour over top of it. It's dried and cured. Gave it a good wipe down and I'm just going to do a pour over top of it. Um, I don't have a good way of trying to lay out exactly what I'm going to do here for you tonight other than I am going to do three um, sort of ringish, straightish, dirty pourish, something like that and put some of that color in between them so that I get a bit of separation this time. Um, I am going to do three little small cups. I'm not going to fill these up at all because that would be way too much paint for this canvas. This is a 10 by 20 inch gallery wrapped canvas. And here we go, I'm going to start with layering my Just bringing it over the edges, bringing the weight of the paint back, opening up some of these lines, getting the composition where I like it. Because I have so much paint on here, it just gives me a little bit of that extra kind of wiggle room to play with the composition and be able to tilt more off like I did on this far side over here because I didn't like part of it, so I was able to tilt quite a bit of it off. I love this middle from pretty much I love from here to here. I'm not sure about this little end piece here. I may have to continue tilting a little more of that off. Not sure that I will like it. But let's give it a torch and see what happens. I'm expecting quite a few cells to pop up. And no, I do not use any silicone or anything like that in any of my paints. Like I said, it's just paint and water. The cell reaction that I'm getting is simply from the different densities of the paint and how I layered them in my cup. <clears throat> the different opaque and transparent, uh, tr excuse me, transparent paints react with each other. They sink, some go through, some go up, some are more aggressive. 
some are less aggressive. Those reactions, the combination of it coming up and down, that's what actually gives you your cells. So the more you kind of learn about the specific density and the gravity of your paints, the more you'll be able to create cells on your own without using any additives. And I definitely, like I said, like what's going on in the middle and the end there. So I'd like to open that up a little bit more. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just want to bring that down a little bit more. Perfect. Wanted to open up some of those blue lines in here a lot more. Yes. And I'm just scraping underneath to catch some of the worst of the drips from underneath. That way they don't pull any of the composition off the canvas. You need to do that multiple times, not just once or twice. I do it probably every few minutes for the first about half an hour that my painting is done and sitting. And just keep coming back and checking on it. Also just kind of check, make sure if any air bubbles have risen at all, that you want to pop and get rid of those because they will continue to keep coming up over time, um, about the first half hour or so while your painting is drying. So you wanna make sure that you take care of those. So as you're, you know, hanging out, cleaning up, just keep an eye on it, scrape your drips, do your thing. And I will take you in for a close up here in just a moment, just gonna play with my edges. All right guys, here we are a minute later. Got my edges all fixed up and I've been scraping my drips. And here we go, I'll take you over for a close up. Oh, that copper is just gonna shine. Those copper lines in there, love them. So many neat details in this one. Oh, come on. Anyways, I love how it turned out. I can't wait to see what it dries like. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you back for the next one. Take care.